Good morning and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. We welcome you to worship this Sunday. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, who gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for all our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
hearts. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And now ask that you join me as we affirm our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. thy blood and righteousness my beauty are my glorious rest midst flaming worlds in these arrayed with joy shall I lift up my head bold shall I stand Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Many years ago, a heavyweight boxer, Muhammad Ali, made a famous statement. He said, I am the greatest. Unarguably, Muhammad Ali was the greatest heavyweight boxer 
among his peers. He won 56 fights in total. 37 of them were knockouts. I wonder who here at Christ Lutheran Church can say, like Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. Can an elder say that? Can a church staff say that? Can a church member say, I am the greatest? Who is the greatest among us? This question immediately provokes an argument just as it did among the disciples of Jesus. Mark in our gospel reading verses 30 to 34 tells us about an argument among the disciples on their way to Caprina. Earlier on, Jesus had taught his disciples about his sacrificial death, barrier, and resurrection from the grave. Mark says they did not understand what he was saying, but were afraid to ask him. The disciples instead argued among themselves about who was the greatest. I can hear through my imaginative ears John saying to the rest of the disciples, I am the greatest because I am a part of the inner circle of Jesus. I can hear Peter saying to others, I am the greatest because I am a professional fisherman, not just a disciple. I can hear Matthew saying to John, Peter, and the rest, I am the greatest because remember guys, I was a tax collector. I worked for the Roman government. With my imaginative ears, I can also hear Judas saying, I am the greatest because I am the treasurer of this group. Hope you guys recognize that. I can hear the rest of the disciples also saying similar things as an argument for greatness. Well, Mark tells us that when the disciples finally arrived at Capernaum and were in the house with Jesus, he asked them about their argument on the road leading to Capernaum. Mark says there was dead silence in the house because they had argued about who was the greatest among them on the way to Capernaum. Jesus then used that moment to teach his disciples about greatness in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, if you want to be first, you must be last of all and seventh of all. Notice Jesus doesn't dismiss his disciples' ambition of greatness. Instead, he transforms their understanding of true greatness. He corrects their presuppositions of how greatness is acquired in the kingdom of God. Jesus says to his disciples, and is saying the same to us, that if you desire greatness in the kingdom of God, then you must be the last of all and the seventh of all. In a Jewish culture of Jesus' day, first men ruled us, priests, and other persons of authority and influence. Those to be last men to be in a position with no rank, no authority, no influence, no privilege, no status. A seven of all refers to the person who is the lowest in the rank of all the sevens. The one who would be allowed to eat only what is left after everyone else had eaten. In the kingdom of God, the greatness, in the kingdom of God, the greatest are those who are the very last and sevens of all. So who is the greatest among us? The greatest among us is the one who puts the needs of others before himself or herself. The greatest among us is the one who doesn't think of himself or herself 
as above any task that might be trivial or lowly. The one who is the greatest amongst us is the one who thinks of others first and himself last. He's the one who is willing to do the most humble service. C.H. Spurgeon said this, In Christ's kingdom, the way to go up is to go down. Sink self, and you shall surely rise. The one who is the greatest among us is the one who is willing to give up rank and status and importance just to serve. The, the one who is the greatest among us is the one who is not high-minded and sophisticated. It's the one who watches the feet of others willingly. It's the one who serves others regardless of status. It's the one who is like Jesus, who left his honor and glory and became last of all and a servant of all. Jesus continues to teach his disciples about greatness in the kingdom of God in verses 35 to 37. Mark says, Jesus got a child and first put him in the midst of his disciples. Then he took the child into his arms and said to his disciples, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Apparently, this was a child from the house Jesus and his disciples were received. A child in the Jewish and Roman culture was the least significant person. In the day of Jesus, the social status of children was just barely above that of a slave. They were considered weak, lash, and without value, unlike the high value placed on children in the West. They had no rights and were seen as powerless, vulnerable, and consumers in the society. However, when Jesus picked up the child in his arms and told his disciples to receive one as such like these in his name, he did it to teach them an object lesson about greatness in the kingdom of God. The child in the arms of Jesus represented the vulnerability, powerlessness, and need of the children of his days. They represented the needed, they represented the weak, they represented the least of the society. Therefore, the lesson Jesus teaches about greatness in the kingdom of God is this. Anyone who desires to be first, meaning to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, must be willing to take care of the vulnerable, the powerless, the needed, the weak, and the least among us. But not only that, he must also be willing to welcome them as well. And Jesus says anyone who welcomes the vulnerable, the powerless, the needed, the weak, and least among us welcomes him and his father. So who is then the greatest among us? The greatest among us is the one who, in the name of Jesus, cares for the needed and least around us. He is the one who quietly supports homeless shelters and food banks around Texas. He's the one who bathes and changes and provides care for the elderly sick and dying. He is the one who welcomes the poor and ordinary into his home and encourages them. He is the one who shows love and hospitality to the 
recovering substance abuser. He's the one who encourages and receives the dropout, the homeless, and the less fortunate. He's the one who makes contribution to alleviate the suffering of others. He's the one who shares the gospel with the weak, with the least and needed around us so that they can become saved and baptized and members of his church. Then Jesus, because of his relationship with them, will care for them physically and spiritually, will become their good shepherd, will fill their hearts with love, will listen to their prayers, and will provide for their needs. So yes, Muhammad Ali, so yes, like Muhammad Ali, you can become the greatest among us. You can become the greatest among us, not based on your status and achievements, but based on your willingness to be the last of all of us. The seventh of all of us. But not only that, you must be willing to care for all around you and to welcome all around you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord our God. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us with good and honest hearts. We may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth that we may be preser preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and that faith in you may be strengthened, love towards others increase, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislator of this and every state, and to all those who make and administer and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure, for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, according to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Lord, in your mercy, comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth, nor our many transgressions, out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time and trouble, show yourself a very pleasant help the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Lord, in your mercy, cause all need, needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, 
and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing, Lord, in your mercy. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls, and all our talents together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us, purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. These and whatsoever other things you would have us to ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, your only Son and our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations. And the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Creature 